My name is Johanna, I'm from the UN Innovation Network and on behalf of my colleague Ursula from the ITU and myself, I'm really pleased to welcome you to this Tech Learn talk today. As you can see, today will be all about chatbots. Um, before we start diving into chatbots, I wanted to briefly share a bit of context about this webinar series with you. Some of you may have joined before, but for those who are new, um, this webinar series um, is trying to help colleagues from all across the UN understand innovation and new technologies a little bit better. And uh, we have all seen over the past months that the world is rapidly changing and that we at the UN, we really need to change with it. And we're very lucky that one of the biggest advocates in the UN for innovative thinking, for experimentation, for leveraging new technologies is our Secretary General himself. And on the next slide, you can see that he has repeatedly stressed that innovation is a priority for him. Um, if we could advance to the next slide, that would be helpful. Thank you, Yuri. Uh, he has developed a lot of strategies and guidance. This is just an overview of some of the most recent, uh, recent policy guidance he's put out there. So you can see there's a strategy on new technologies in the bottom right. Uh, in the top right, there's the report from a uh, task force on digital finance that was actually just published last week. He's developed a roadmap for digital cooperation and a guide to blockchain. And what I think really high, highlights the Secretary General's commitment to innovation and his expectation um, for everyone in the UN system to go on this journey with them is the, the one on top in the middle is the UN data strategy. And if you look carefully, it says data strategy for action by everyone everywhere. So he really expects us to think creatively and leverage new technologies and data sources in the work that we're doing day to day to help the UN achieve its mandate. Um, I, I think it's fantastic that we have a, a forward thinker like the Secretary General who's really encouraging us to do this, but I also always think that it's a lot easier said than done, that we should use technology and new data sources. And uh, many of us just haven't worked that heavily with data or aren't familiar with the latest technologies. And it can be a little bit intimidating to dive into that world. It, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about you, but to me, uh, it feels like technologies, they often create their own world, they have their own language, there's so much, there's so much jargon around it and, and that can really be a little bit intimidating. So on the next slide, you will see that we have created this Tech Learn Talk series to try and give a jargon free introduction to technologies and how they can be applied to the SDGs. Um, we have previously looked at blockchain and drones, we've looked at AR and VR and AI, and uh, today we're really excited to look at chatbots uh, and see how, how they work in a very, simple layman's term. We really try to not use any jargon. If we do call us out on it, we don't want to do it. Uh, and give you direct examples of how the UN is already using our chatbots in its work. I wanted to ask you a quick question. Um, because we're talking about chatbots, I thought it'd be interesting to see how many of you have actually interacted uh, with chatbots recently. So I've launched a quick poll. Uh, click on what you have done giving you a few more seconds. I'm seeing lots of votes coming in and we'll be sharing the results in a minute. Five more seconds. If you haven't cast your vote yet, do so now. And here we go. I'm sharing the results. So we can see that almost half of everyone, I hope you can see it. Uh, oh, actually not, you're not, yeah, you should be able to see it. Half of everyone has uh, used the chat bot this week. So I think that's really encouraging. If you have, why don't you put in the chat box in Zoom what, what kind of chat box it was, be really curious. And we're also seeing 40% don't think that they have used a chat bot. And when we had a conversation before this webinar uh, with one of our presenters, uh, his response to that was like, well, have they not used a chat bot or interacted with a chat bot or are they maybe not aware if they've interacted with a chat bot? So very interesting question there. But great to see that so many of you are familiar with chatbots already. I'm going to stop sharing the results now. Um, and today we really want to dive a little bit deeper from moving from the user side to moving into the back end and how do you actually program a chatbot, what do you need to consider uh, and in what context can you use it. And as always we'll be first giving you an introduction to the technology and then we'll open up for a brief Q&A around that technology to answer any questions you might have around that before giving you an example and then we have more time for Q&A after that. And on the next slide you can see how you can ask questions in this webinar 
there's a box at the bottom of the screen, the Q&A box. Uh, we encourage you to put any questions that you have in there. And you can also see other, uh, other questions that our colleagues have asked. And if you like them and are also interested, you can give them a thumbs up um, to let us know that you're interested. Right, and with that, I am thrilled to introduce you to our speakers for the day. We are joined by Leila from UNDP. Leila is the head of the exploration at UNDP's Accelerator Lab in Azerbaijan, and she's going to give us a case study on how UNDP uses chatbots later on. And we're also joined by Yuri, who's a program manager in the Air Navigation Bureau at ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization. So thanks to both of you for joining us today, really appreciate it. And I'm going to hand over to Yuri first for the non-technical introduction. And this is, uh, this is particularly exciting uh, for us at UNAN because Yuri has pitched to do the presentation in a slightly different format. Yuri, handing over to you for you to ask to tell us more. Thank you very much. Um, and. Uh... Uh, welcome to everybody. Thank you for attending this. So as was just mentioned, we want to try something slightly different this time. So um, we'll be sharing a quick um, presentation, movie slash presentation. And uh, at the end of it, we will take the questions. So let me start the movie now. And if, in the beginning, it might be a little bit loud. So you might want to have your hands on the volume button just to make sure um, you don't get startled by the, the, the sound. See you in a little bit. <clears throat> Sorry, thank you.
For this next bit, just wanted to show you a little bit behind the scenes. And so we'll demonstrate real quick at a high level how we put one of these bots together. First, we need a question we want to answer. So here we're going to ask ourselves, where are the ICAO procurement rules? Next, we need to know the answer to the question. So here we see on the screen the URL, the website where the answer is. We also need to have some creative ways of asking the question too. So we're going to ask here, what are the ICAO procurement rules? Or something like, I am looking for the ICAO procurement rules. The first step is to train the bot to understand the question. So we log in to our natural process application. Here we use AWS, but there are many other applications out there that can do this. And we start typing in the questions. This is really the way that the bot is going to be able to take an input from the user and map it to the right question and therefore also the answer. It doesn't take long to do, but it can be tedious sometimes because of the many ways that a question could be asked. The bot is going to look for the answer somewhere that is predefined. So in this case, we have a data file and we have to add the answer to the question so that when the bot looks for it, it will find it and be able to return it to the user. The third step is to let the bot train itself on the new data. This usually is an automated function on the application. You push one button, wait a few minutes, and at the end of that, the bot should be able to recognize the question and provide the answer. The next step is to test the bot. Most applications will have an area dedicated to testing. So you just simply open it up, put the question in and see if you get the right answer. After having verified that you did get the right answer, the next step is to publish. This is also usually just a one button step. So you press the button, let the computer do its thing, and it will let you know when it has completed the publication process. Publication will link the bot to whatever application you use to connect to the bot with. Finally, go to your application that you connect to the bot with and ask the question. Now, sometimes this may take a few minutes because systems take a while to update themselves. So give it maybe four or five minutes, come back, ask the question, and you should get the answer. Now this has of course been a very simplified demonstration, but I hope that you understand now that it's not that difficult to do and that there are a lot of tools out there that will help you get your bot up and running and then to keep it maintained as the questions and the answers evolve. We will now go back to the more exciting part of the presentation. We will now look at some of the costs, risks and complexities associated with chatbots. To build a basic bot, the platform costs are usually very low. It may even come with whatever installation you have existing 
in your system. Programming costs are a little bit higher, but they are not things that most people would be able to do without at least some training. Asking the bot questions, well, that's really a few cents or even less than a cent or a hundred or so questions. So it's very affordable. But if you think about it, all the time you save, well, that's priceless. There are risks with chatbots just like there are risks with everything else. So you need to keep all sensitive information in-house and you need to keep the information up to date simply by having the chat box look up the information where it already is. Because where it is most likely is already going to be safe and secure and it's also going to be up to date. Now, every once in a while the system will go down there isn't much you can do about that, but if you think about it, what is happening is that you're just going back to whatever status quo you already have. When it comes to complexity, it's really a very subjective question. But if you want to learn how to create a bot from scratch, it is not that simple. It requires understanding of the logic behind the building of these bots. But then again, for some, learning where everything is, is more complicated than learning to teach a bot where everything is. As with many new technologies, there are some fears that are based on mythology. And so, just wanted to touch on a few of those. First, these bots do not spy. We don't keep any identifying information. Well, except sometimes when somebody includes their name in the question, but those things are relatively rare. The bots also do not make decisions. They inform decision makers, they inform the rest of us, but they themselves do not make those decisions. In the beginning, these bots are going to be very, very simple. All they're really doing is converting some questions of where is this or what is this and being mapped to where that answer is. So you're looking for a phone number, you're looking for something that is a document that's on a library. These are the very simple things that bots start out doing. After some experience with the simple bot, you might consider having the bot connected to live data. So these aren't just static documents, but they might be the system that registered everyone who came to a meeting or to understand the due dates that are given for certain deliverables or to figure out how much leave that I personally may have taken. Of course, there's some engineering required to make sure your bot can get this information through a relatively simple technology that's called an API. In the long term, though, the technology behind bots is much more sophisticated and what they have been able to show others is that if they're given the right data in the right format especially what is known as the corpus that is all the text ever written within an organization then it can through modeling machine learning and artificial intelligence answer questions that we would normally only expect human beings to answer after reading the material. 
things like what's the definition of such and such, or how many people live within a kilometer from an airport, or even if you want to interact with the data and change some of the information, you can do it through a book. But this sophisticated level is just four or five, maybe six years away. So for this presentation, we're not gonna go into any more detail. I would like to end the presentation with just one final thought. In the end, everything that has been written down within an organization has a purpose. It's either there as a rule, it's there to explain why a certain decision was made, or it follows up to make sure that the actions that were decided upon were implemented. When we look at the full knowledge set of an organization, bots are one way that we can interact with them and start to deconstruct them so that in the future, more sophisticated technology can help us develop much cleaner, much more efficient tools to make us more efficient for everyone. And so I just want to show this one last picture. This is a representation of one of the annexes of the Chicago Convention, that is the Convention on Civil International Civil Aviation. And what you see here are the different nodes for the chapters, the words, the definitions. And you think you can already see how turning our words into digital representations such as this can help feed information systems of the future. So thank you very much for uh, having attended this presentation, and I look very much forward to the questions and answers. Thank you so much, Yuri. Um, that was fantastic, and we really appreciate as well you also demonstrating for us uh, this different way of um, doing presentations. Hi, everyone. It's Ursula here from ITU, and we're now going to moderate the Q&A around Yuri's presentation before turning to, to Leila. And uh, Yuri, we have a few questions already come up in the Q&A. Uh, the, the one that has the most likes at the moment um, is, could you elaborate on the machine learning AI element? Will the bot just do that or does it require uh, programming? Um, and uh, maybe actually given the time, it could be good to just flag a number of these questions here and remind everyone where they can add their Q&A at the bottom of the screen and also encourage people to like the questions that are there so that we can be sure to get to those. And then Yuri, after you answer these questions and we have Leila's presentation, just reminding everyone we have another Q&A as well. So any questions we don't get to in this section, we can also come back and ask Leila and Yuri the questions. So, so Yuri, do you want to start with that one? Um, if you could elaborate on the, the machine learning AI element. Uh, yes, thank you very much. I uh, hope everyone can hear me okay. I was having some microphone problems before, but um, so it's, it's, a, it's a very good question in the sense that um, the AI, the interaction that you're, you will have with AI or machine learning uh, can vary depending on your skill set and also on how um, involved you want to be with the creation of bots. So there are some who download the complicated uh, programs, install their own instances, as we call it, you know, they create their own bot basically from scratch. There are others who go into platforms that exist and they exist on all major platforms, whether it's Microsoft, or it's uh, Amazon or Google or Apple or any one of those, they have um, services that are available where your interaction with the bot is to train the bot, right? You have to create the questions and link it to the answers. And it's just as almost as natural as just coming up with many different ways to ask the same question and then correcting the system when it uh, links it to the wrong answer or providing the um, you know, the right answer when it doesn't know what it is. So the machine learning AI element can either be way back, you know, out of sight basically, and you can create these bots using these third party tools, or you can create a bot uh, from scratch, including the AI engine, 
<clears throat> excuse me, and uh, <clears throat> well, I apologize for that. And, um, and, and so it's really up to you how you tweak it. Uh, my recommendation is start from the light things. Don't try to understand how it does what it does. So start from the light things, but always uh, keep your knowledge up to date with kind of how it's doing it so that you're able to uh, be confident yourself that it's not doing anything you, you didn't expect it to do. And also that you can explain it to people no matter you know, what level they are and no matter whether they're you know, uh, people who are looking for a reason to be excited about it or for a reason, let's say, to you know, maybe be a little bit suspicious about it. So I hope that answers the question. Thanks so much, Yuri. So the next uh, couple of ones that are most popular are, uh, how does the bot update with new ways to ask question, new questions, presumably also new answers? And uh, would you say also that chatbots are better applied to contexts with fixed data? And or how would we maintain it with data that's expected to change regularly, such as number of beneficiaries? Uh, okay, so um, the easiest uh, thing for me to do is uh, the static data. So yesterday I had a question from a colleague in IKEA we have these sessional dates because we have uh, decision-making bodies that meet on specific dates. And the question was well when, when are the dates for next year? So I knew where it was because I know on which website to go and what do document to download to look this information up. But once I looked that information up I added that link that question and that link into the bot. Now that means I have to log into the development mode in the bot, ask those questions, train it, and you know that bit you saw in the middle of the video uh, movie, that's what that was about. But for more dynamic data, what you would need to do is be able to identify where that data is and have that data owner within your organization provide a pipeline from, from to you for that. It's called an API. Uh, so for example, um, when it comes to the information on um, IKO staff uh, extensions, right, phone extensions, the IKO staff is a dynamic list that is already somewhere in the organization. And we have a website, which we call the directory, that anyone can go in, and it looks like a phone directory. But the same information pipe that feeds that directory, we would get a hold of that and feed the bot. It's a little more sophisticated to train the bot in the back end, but once you do it, it remains current. So it's, it provides, um, it provides uh, value back to the user. The, you know, the last part of that is kind of what you saw. I mean, the, the long-term vision of all of this is that as you start doing this, whether it's just telling a bot where to look up static information, or it's to tell the bot how to deal with you know, pipeline of inf data coming in, uh, you're adding to the digitization of information within your organization. And for sure, you know, we see the, the, um, the information technology being developed to where that is going to be the main natural, <clears throat> the main resource that's going to provide a powerful um, product five, six years from now. So, uh, you know, as I get questions from my colleagues, I try to digitize that experience using bots. And hopefully, you know, later on, that digitization will allow us to provide insights into the way we are uh, function as an organization and also help uh, staff to get, um, you know, less headaches when they're looking for information. Thanks so much, Yuri. Um, maybe we'll just have uh, one or two more short questions because then we'll have Leila's presentation and another Q&A so we'll be able to tackle the other questions then as well. Uh, so one question that's at the top of the list right now is um, could you remind us what application was used to develop this chatbot and was there a reason for going with the bot through AWS as opposed to other software companies? Uh, okay, so short answer. Uh, yes, we went with AWS, Amazon Web Services. They have something that you saw there in the movie was the Lex application. It wasn't the Alexa. Alexa would have added the vocal in interface, so we didn't do that. And the reason I use AWS is, you know, the great tradition of innovation is to look what someone else did and just try and copy it with a modification. So I didn't go, I didn't go through a process to vet which one is better. I just had a colleague who had used 
complex. So I went in and I, I learned from that and then I use it myself. Having said that, um, when you look at this from an enterprise perspective, of course, you know, you have to weigh all the advantages of using the other systems, especially considering what you already have in house. So, you know, if you have Microsoft in house, Microsoft has a bot capability as well. And so, you know, for many that might make more sense. Fantastic, Yuri. Thanks so much. And thanks also for all the great questions. And we will come back and answer more of them after Layla's presentation, because you, Yuri, you're going to stick around as well, right? Fabulous. Wonderful. I'd also just like to flag to colleagues that in the chat, a number of colleagues have been um, posting information about other chats, uh, sorry, other chat bots in the UN system. So that's a, another good source of information as, as well. So, um, Johanna, over to you if you're going to do any further introduction of Layla. Uh, thanks, everyone. I wasn't going to. I was just going to buy Layla some time so she can uh, share her screen to share Great. her slides. Uh, as we said, Layla is the head of exploration from uh, UNDP's Accelerator Lab in Azerbaijan. And Layla, your screen is just coming up and we can see it now. Sorry. Side. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting um, us today to share this um, presentation with you on uh, our recent um, project. Uh, before this, I would like to um, to share that uh, I'm a part of UNDP Accelerator, brand new Accelerator Lab which was established last year. And uh, we, are, um, we are a part of CEO to innovate and to have um, innovative interventions wherever possible. And COVID uh, outbreak was a great um, opportunity for that. So we actually uh, presented as a team a series of uh, digital and innovative projects to respond to COVID needs, uh, government needs. And uh, WhatsApp bot was one of the um, one of these uh, projects which uh, demonstrated results almost immediately. Um, so, first of all, let me give you a little bit background and context. Uh, why WhatsApp bot? So, in uh, Ag Lab, we always try to listen to the community and to find new solutions. Uh, for some old problems and uh, at the same time to fulfill the government expectations. So the government at that point when uh, the, there was a COVID outbreak in uh, April in uh, Azerbaijan, uh, the government has imposed certain limitations as in all other countries and was looking for an effective uh, communication tools to uh, deliver or all important messages. Uh, but as I say, at the same time, uh, and as the same at, on the global level, uh, fake news uh, were the biggest problem. Fake news and fake information uh, was disseminating through WhatsApp Messenger a lot in Azerbaijan because 97% uh, of population actually use WhatsApp uh, in our country. So we started to think uh, what to do and to um, to scan horizon, as we say. Uh, at this point, uh, we connected to uh, TABIB. Uh, TABIB is a government organization uh, named uh, the Administration of the Regional Medical Division. They are responsible for COVID response in our country, and actually they are today here with us. And uh, we, so we were asked for some uh, good solution for uh, communication uh, effective communication. And at the same time, uh, we, uh, we found out that uh, co innovative community in Azerbaijan is also doing something uh, interesting and useful uh, to tackle the COVID challenges. So this is how we uh, connected to the bot box and they are also today with us um, here. And uh, the, these guys uh, start up team they were actually uh, creating uh, chatbots and they created one proactively, uh, voluntarily, I would say. And that was a chatbot for the WhatsApp messenger in Azerbaijani language. 
that's the critical point because uh, there were some bots available, but they were not in uh, local language. So uh, we connected uh, all three partners. So it was like uh, UNDP, startup community, government cooperation. And this is something we are proud about. And this is how we uh, came up with our uh, Let me uh, share after Yuri's presentation, uh, I, I'm, I wouldn't go into details of technology behind, but let me mention here that uh, we decided to stick to WhatsApp uh, because uh, we wanted to be effective and to go exactly to the area where conversation starts. So we uh, developed the chatbot uh, with the help of Botbox uh, for WhatsApp business and with Botbox technology and the Twilio, the instant messenger, messages, uh, messages uh, as a part of the technology. So the Tabib bot, this is how we call it, call it, can cover up to 1 million users at the same time and answers any user request within less than a single second. So potentially uh, one ninth of the country could use uh, bot uh, simultaneously. Uh, when we came to the uh, content, we populated uh, the bot with the most um, popular questions uh, that were um, recommendations, of, of course, from uh, the government uh, to use masks, to protect uh, uh, families and etc. statistics. Uh, and we also created some opportunities to uh, learn uh, what's going on globally. So we have some um, part on the classification by age, on how to protect yourself, where the COVID is most spread, and it's COVID symptoms, and etc. And also we had a very uh, one uh, important uh, part here, the myths. Actually, it was updated lately, and that's a uh, good uh, demonstration of the fact that these chatbots are very um, flexible and they could be populated really fast with the needed information, which helps uh, to respond to the needs immediately. Uh, there is also a technical share function so that you can share uh, the chat with friends. And uh, as we have a coronavirus fund uh, in our country, we have a donate uh, button, uh, which actually drives you to the uh, particular link. And here's a little bit of statistics. Uh, the project was really very successful. And uh, you can see the most clicked button. So still the uh, statistics, statistics was the most popular question. Still is the most popular question. Uh, so far we had 10,000 users um, interacted with a bot. And uh, we have subscribers, those who want to receive daily updates on statistics. And we had, uh, 180,000 interactions overall since the launch of the bot. And here you can see that as it is in, uh, in Azerbaijan, uh, but it's not limited to, the, uh, to our country only. So um, you see other regions interacting with the bot because we claim that this is the bot for Azerbaijani people all over the world, those who want to know what's going on. And now I want to demonstrate you a screen recorder from my, uh, from my phone to show how the, uh, this uh, bot works in reality. So what is, the behind, what is behind the technology? So here we go. So we start our conversation with Salam, which is high in Azerbaijani. Then we see all uh, menu available and you can interact obviously as I mentioned and depending on your needs the board drives you to the needed direction and also uh, selecting some uh, some parts of the menu I want to demonstrate you that we also included um, like icons and some images uh, so to make it as user-friendly as possible so that you can see it here. So 
that's basically it. And yeah, so this is how it goes. Uh, you can see the name, tab you bought here. And yes, then you can put 10 and sign up for the daily updates. So this is from my side. Thank you. And I'm open for questions. Thank you so much, Leila. That was um, a really exciting demonstration and congratulations on the, the great results too. And such a topical uh, chat bot for the situation that we're all in now. Um, I'm just looking at, uh, at our Q&A and, and encouraging folks as well to put questions in there and please also vote for questions that are, that are there. Um, let's see, I, I think I see a specific one for you here. Thank you, Leila. Uh, when it comes to personal data, such as age, etc., how do you ensure that the project simplifies with data protection and privacy regulations, especially in the EU, where everything is private by default. And I, I see there's another question they're also asking about how um, privacy issues uh, might be addressed. So uh, uh, that's uh, actually um, the privacy is always the big question. Uh, I heard that it was mentioned, EU was mentioned, right? So yeah. Uh, yeah, we are not under EU regulations actually, but uh, in general, like it's a, it's again, it's a big question all the time, and actually, um, it's a big big issue for all other uh, projects now, um, which we are trying to um, secure and to resolve, and maybe uh, our um, re representative from our startup team can go here uh, into details to uh, respond to this question from technical side if uh, the audience is interested. Thank you so much. If you don't mind, I will um, just give him the floor. Oh, sure. Sorry. Just a jump in here. I think this is Elmia from uh, yeah. Box. Yeah. Okay, Elmi, you should be able to unmute yourself and speak. Yeah, hello everybody. I'm just trying, you know, to turn on the camera, but without any success. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, regarding the question, uh, regarding the question uh, about privacy, the privacy thing, you know, uh, uh, covered by our solution providers, uh, and uh, especially uh, it's uh, covered uh, by Facebook because we actually building the tools on a third party applications. That's the WhatsApp and uh, WhatsApp dealing with the all privacy issues and concerns and they actually covering the, uh, those issues uh, by, you know, uh, limitations uh by uh you know uh, adding uh, something extra authentication there so uh actually uh the biggest advantage of the chatbots is that you building the tool uh which will be used on a most popular uh messenger apps that uh, already downloaded and already you know uh uh people already using them so uh here's the uh, here's the deal that the uh, you know, when you're building something for for the uh, audience, for bigger audience, and if you uh, building it on a, a third-party services like WhatsApp uh, or, or Messenger or WeChat or Viber, doesn't matter. You uh, actually uh, accepting the uh, you know uh, all uh, terms and conditions, and uh, they are. They, you know, uh, the big organizations like WhatsApp on their own, uh, uh, you know, dealing with the privacy issues because uh, uh, we're not storing the, any dead data because uh, uh, WhatsApp not allowing this. Uh, we're just using the APIs to respond to the users uh, in a proper way, like uh, uh, with the text or with a link or with the button. So, uh, so that's not the, that's not the you know uh, concern at all. I mean, uh, if you're going to build something on uh, messenger channels, uh, don't worry about this. Uh, absolutely. 
Thank you. Oh, uh, I think I see Yuri there. Yuri, did you want to say something on, on the privacy issues? Oh, so, so, sorry. No, I, I forgot my mic was on. Oh, no was worries. worries. We'll, I'm we'll really sorry. Very shortly. I just wondered, this could be uh, either for Leila or Elmir. Uh, people are asking about the cost and the time it took to develop this. Could you share something on those, please? Uh, Leila, go on, please. Uh, before uh, Elmir goes to the details, I just wanted to uh, emphasize here that we managed to be fast um, because we just found the solution, uh, which was already developed by Botbox, and we connected all the dots. But from the technical part, uh, Elmir will be a um, better choice to, to respond. Yeah. So Basically, uh, we are uh, the chatbot, uh, not, not just the chatbot, but uh, omnichannel growth and communication platform. And uh, our platform is kind of Slack for internal communication uh, and uh, Zendesk for ticketing and the live chat uh, and the customer segmentations. So, Basically, we are uh, working uh, mainly with BFCI, banking and finance uh, industry, and we have the triggers. Uh, you know, uh, chatbots is not only solving the uh, you know uh, problems, but they uh, already you know uh, started to uh, add the value uh, in terms of the sales in terms of the acquisition and retention part. So uh, it's very important uh, when you, especially when you're doing the business online, when you're running the uh, startup or e-commerce, uh, you need, you know, uh, catch those customers who landed or who are surfing there. And we have the uh, 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 dashboard where you can track the uh, user data and we have other many very useful tools like chat voice and uh, video calls. We have a builder, which you can build the bot basically uh, once and deploy it on a, a messenger, WhatsApp and Telegram uh, with the one click. And we have uh, AI triggers like uh, we analyzing the user database, uh, our customers database and uh, if the for instance, someone, if someone's credit card expiration date uh, uh, is coming soon, we just sending the, you know, uh, trigger message that your card will expire. Do you want, uh, you know, uh, to expand it? It's just, you know, one of the 23 triggers. So basically uh, our solutions part, uh, we have, to build the chatbot, uh, we using the, our builder, uh, and unfortunately, uh, I should, you know, uh, access to my account through uh, other uh, platform. Um, Elma, thank you so so much so, um, yeah. for those answers. I'm just at this stage also going to bring um, Yuri back in because we've got a lot of questions piling yeah, up. Sure. But yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I'm just, you know, I'm just a uh, startup, uh, you know, owner, and I'm trying uh, to, you know, uh, advertise it uh, everywhere. So, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> no, thank you so much, Elmo. We really appreciate it. Uh, okay. Um, so, Yuri, um, feel free, uh, and, uh, and and Leila as well. We have a, a few questions which I think straddle both of your uh, presentations. Uh, let's see. Uh, can, can the bot be connected to the new ERP system as the new ERP system will be hosting almost every data such as HR, finance, et cetera? I guess, how, how can the bot kind of connect to other systems that uh, the organization uh, has? Let's take a couple of other questions and um, let's see. Uh, at what level or what point can a host take control of the bot? I think this could apply to, to both of you. Uh, if you see that you're getting, or if there's a number of questions coming in that they're um, going beyond perhaps what the bot currently can, can respond to, uh, is there some way that the, the owner you know, is, is, is triggered and can, can respond? Uh, and uh, a key one about how you measure the success or usability. Um, so Yuri, let's turn to you first. Uh, okay. 
Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, these are very uh, relevant questions and, and things you have to always keep in mind. Um, so first thing, connectivity to ERP, whatever you want to call it, um, it's one thing to connect to information that has been classified as not sensitive and is available um, and kept up to date already by some colleagues of yours where you're connecting. So you're not really affecting their work. You're not having them to take some responsibility to make sure that you know um, everything is fine. So start off somewhere in the in what I call the internal public domain of information where it's okay uh, for you to to build the bot uh, and build the confidence of the bot that way. But then when your organization has enterprise discussions to understand how there is a common meeting point um, somewhere in, in a predefined place, I'd say you have to sit down with your colleagues and say, okay, can we try to get a point two years from now where it is connected to certain information that's in the enterprise uh, systems uh, where it will be basically automatic, the data will come out of that system automatically to, to, the, to, to the bot. Uh, and that does take your you know, cybersecurity experts to take a look at what's going on. It does, there is some investment required by um, by the staff. Uh, but at the same time, your enterprise system is probably already looking at a suite of tools that either ex includes a bot or will include a bot sometime in the future because, you know, this bot technology is just uh, front and center for, um, for, for usability. So I, you know, I'd, I'd be very surprised if any one of our colleagues is using a suite of tools that doesn't have some bot capability. And when it's when it has that bot capability, it's going to allow you to decide who has control over it. So right now I use AWS as a third party uh, provider and you know, everything is done. I can choose which cloud, where, where the data is stored in the cloud. So of course I can comply with you know, the Vienna Convention and things like that. But <clears throat> uh, in in-house in IKEA, we have Microsoft and I think that's where IKEA will probably go in the future to have uh, this initial kind of uh, project, pilot project, become more sophisticated in the future and integrated with it. And when they do that, they probably have an option to co-locate um, the bot and all of the tech, you know, the bot, um, uh, the things behind the bots, so the AI and all that, uh, in the same place where we already secure all the other IK information. So I think that's that's definitely um, something you want to always keep in mind, and and you know, to the extent possible make sure that uh, people are, um, you know, are, are, are focused on the same long-term goal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we have a few other questions that have come in. And so uh, we wonder if it's possible, Yuri and Leila, just to stay on a little bit longer after 10 to cover the questions. I'm seeing you nodding. Thank you so much. Um, Leila, a couple of questions that have come in specifically for you. Um, were data analytics provided, analysis of questions and misconception reports provided to you or to the national health authorities? And also there's curiosity around whether the chatbot you've developed um, could be replicated in other parts of the world. Uh, yeah, and, and let me just go back to the question with costs uh, yeah. to answer shortly. Uh, so um, actually um, the development part uh, depends on uh, with whom you work and uh, how you agree on the features and etc. Uh, it could be cheap, it could be uh, quite expensive. The thing is that you have to be ready for some ongoing uh, costs. Uh, I want to emphasize this specifically when you plan because we are all the budget owners here. So um, you have to agree with, uh, if you work with government or if it's your own project, you have to understand that beyond the um, initial cost for the development, you will, uh, if you want to make it uh, for free for the users, then you have to be, you, you have to be ready to pay for the, uh, uh, for the messages uh, and for the interactions all the time. So that's the first one, uh, first point. The second on data, uh, we, uh, the data is provide, provided both to us and to Tabib. Um, basically we jointly um, analyze it. Uh, we have uh, so far, uh, we, uh, so it was like, now it's like two or three months uh, 
of the book since the launch and we analyzed the data roughly but we plan to come back to it a little bit later because this is the was quite hectic time but uh, basically um, the data is shared um, both with us and the with health authorities so we managed to build this cooperation so that we come up we analyze it and we we decide to come up with some um, joint uh, next steps or solutions or maybe responses and this actually happened at some point we uh, made the call to discuss um, new um, chapters or new additions to the um, to the bot based on the number of interactions so we saw that it's growing even without any promotion and we decided to populate it with extra uh, information Thank you so much, Leila. Uh, Yuri, another couple of questions uh, for you. Uh, is it the same process as you described if you're creating voice-enabled bots like uh, Alexa? And also, is it possible to integrate such chatbots in a mobile app or other mobile channels? Uh, okay, so I haven't done the Alexa thing yet, um, but from what I can see on the Amazon Web Service, um, yeah, they can take the models that the bot was trained on and move it uh, to the Alexa model. That's, and they're also, uh, the bot itself is a service. Uh, so let me say it like this. It's like a, um, a person who sits in between other two people. So uh, you can have uh, one listening uh, API, right, one listening person who then automatically feeds the, the bot and gets the answer from the bot and converts that answer back into with a voice modulator into a voice. So the way you interact with a bot um, is always through you know, third part, another, another tool. So what you saw in the presentation was that we had integrated our bot with uh, a Slack application. You can do it with Facebook, you can do it with uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, so. Um, that's that's the the, uh, the interface uh, that uh, you're looking at, and I'm sorry, but I forgot the second question. Um, with about mobile, could you? Um, yeah. <coughs> yes, yes, you can. You can definitely connect um, through mobile, and because again, um, the programmer, you can either use a tool that exists. I have Slack on my mobile, and I can I can do this with Slack or. Uh, for those who are a little bit more sophisticated, you can create, um, you can program your own app and Amazon will provide you the, um, or any third party provider or bots will provide you with the coding information necessary so you can automatically uh, put it in there. So yeah, definitely integration piece is, is, def is, is, uh, is there and it's um, pretty, pretty strong. Thanks so much, uh, Yuri. Uh, Leila, a question for you. Uh, a number of colleagues have been posting, I'm grateful for that, also in the chat with different kinds of chatbots that the UN has, including WHO one. So there was a question about how did you decide to create a new one instead of uh, building off an existing one? Uh, yeah, I just uh, answered this question in written, but uh, let me also elaborate. So yes, I, uh, the WHO bot existed at this time, but it was in English only and our population don't speak English. So we needed the one with the local, uh, in, in, in local language and with localized information. So something relevant to Azerbaijan. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see, I think uh, we've almost reached the last questions. Um, maybe a question for you, Yuri. It says, uh, do you have to undertake NLP training for the AI? And perhaps if you could also explain uh, the acronym NLP. Uh, so NLP is natural language processing. It's basically a term that covers all of these things that you might see happening without noticing, you know, you're typing and something tries to add, uh, complete your sentence while you type, or uh, you know, you're, you're, you're um, um, searching for a definition of a, uh, of a word. And, you know. So uh, it's, it's basically the AI technology behind that or the machine learning technology behind that. And it's probably, I mean, for those of you who, who are looking out for it, you probably already know, but there's quite a lot of exciting things coming out of the development world. Uh, uh, for that. Now, to use, to train a spot, you don't need to know uh, anything about uh, MP, uh, national uh, language processing. 
nor do you really need to know about AI if you just do the high level stuff, which is to interact with a third party tool, ask the questions and you know, go with that. Um, if you want to do more elaborate things like I showed at the end of the video, so what we're doing is uh, we're trying to take our corpus, which is you know, all the words we have ever written in ICAO and feed it into some NL, uh, natural language processing models. There are quite a few out there. It usually is data heavy and computing heavy, uh, but that's you know, the, the, the promise at the end of that tunnel are things like you know, auto-generating uh, internal documentation, right? So every time we have to onboard a new staff member, there is a, a lot of um, uh, emails and memos that have to be written and the memos have to be written because you know the, there's a legal requirement for that to happen, but it's always the same memo, right? So usually what we do is you go to the previous memo, you open it up, you, you change the name in it and the date, and then that's it, right? Well, once you have a system that really understands how you work with, uh, with, with languages and organization, through a chatbot, you could probably say, we've got this new staff member, please prepare the memo. And in the background, the memo will be prepared. Now, for sure, once that output comes back, you have to have a person validate that that's the right thing because it's still a long way away from where bots and AI will be able to do things at an accuracy higher than that of, of, of a human. And, and human, um, the value of the human is to make sure that the end result is at the 100%. So you, know, you, may not, you, you, you will always have that function, at least in the, in the foreseeable future. So maybe I went a little bit longer than the question asked, but uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Yuri. Thank you so much, Leila. Uh, I see the last question is about the business sustainability model, but I, I know we're pretty much run out of time and um, you did both address this question of the cost. I don't know if you have any uh, additional comment to add around this, uh, the business or sustainability model. Um, oh, sorry. Um, no, go ahead. Oh, I apologize. I, I just wanted to uh, just say a little bit about how I got into all of this. So um, we constantly, I'm, I work in management support as well as other things. And in management support, you always get questions of where is this, where is that, where is this, where is that? You know, we tried everything. We tried a website, we tried a Q&A list, we tried, you know, a nice presentation. It wasn't a movie, but it was a presentation, tell people where it is. But at the end of the day, people ask these questions, they're very simple questions. And I had to connect the dots for them. And people forget that, um, where those dots, how the dots are connected because they're gonna ask, you know, they don't need it then for another six months and then they ask the same question again. So it wasn't so much a business model where I could prove, hey, this makes a lot of sense. It was more, you know, how do I get rid of my headache? And that's how I started using this. And I think uh, for sure, if you go enterprise, you need that business model, but there are a lot of benefits you can get from technology without having to write up a whole you know, case about it uh, especially when the cost is so low. Thank you. Leila? Uh, I just wanted to um, make a note here. This is a big question and great question actually on sustainability and we all the time question ourselves what's going to be uh, what's going to happen to our bot when uh, UNDP stops supporting it. So um, it's pretty much um, is on the shoulders of uh, and the will of the government in our case and not only in our case most probably within the public innovation uh, it will uh, happen in all other countries so um, if we are not talking about the business model for those who create AIs but those who use this or implement this for government so that's a big question and it should be budgeted somewhere uh, in advance uh, by the organization who is managing this. Thank you so much, uh, Leila, Yuri. Uh, Johanna, did you want to close us out? I hadn't planned to, but I'm very happy to say a big thanks to both Leila and Yuri from my side and to you, Ursula, for running the series with me. Um, a specific thank you really to Yuri for piloting this new modality with us of uh, you know, showing a video instead of a presentation. I thought that was fantastic. And Leila, we really appreciate you sharing experiences that are so relevant and, and thematic um, given the current climate. So huge thanks to both of you. We appreciate you sharing it. Um, colleagues have asked for your contact details and uh, we have them usually listed on our website where we also share a recording of this webinar. So in case someone would like to contact these two, please feel free to do so. 
and we're looking forward to keeping the conversation around chatbots going and more generally around new technologies as part of the Tech Learn Talks. So thank you from my side and Ursula back to you. Well, thanks everyone also for tuning in for your wonderful questions and also for sharing the other examples in the chat. And Joanna, I wonder if we could possibly save the chat so that we have a good list of, the, uh, of some of the other chatbot solutions that the UN has, because folks might be interested to, uh, to check those out as well. Absolutely. Wonderful. So with that, uh, have a good rest of day, everybody. And thanks again. And we look forward to seeing you with our net, uh, for our net next uh, uh, Tech Learn talk. Bye.